50 two by fours. That was the most we could fit in the Nissan. The back seats were still out from the first road trip, and so we were able to slide them in there with the trunk open and only about a foot and a half or so sticking out. Luckily, our shop was around the corner from Lowe's, and so we didn't have far to go. We got away with a lot of sketchy shit because of how close we were to Lowe's. Any farther than that, and things probably would have been a bit different. Today, I want to talk about how easy it is to make excuses and how important it is that you do the opposite. After COVID hit, business really picked up. We were getting more orders and taking on bigger projects each month. It was around this time that we started buying in bulk. When we first started out, I would make plans for each project and we would buy only what we needed. In those first few months, we'd only get an order or two each month and there was no guarantee that we would get another order, or if we did, when that order would come. We weren't charging a lot either, and so we really couldn't spare any of the profit from these first few projects to buy extra materials for a project that we didn't even have yet. We had to make rent, we had to save as much as possible. Now, all of a sudden, here we are, a few months into COVID, buying 52 by fours at a time, eight pounds of rags, 25 pounds of screws, and gallons of stain, because we knew that we would use them. We had enough orders to use them. That was a huge indicator for me that PATH was actually growing. Buying in bulk and taking on these bigger projects proved to be a bit of a challenge with the Nissan. We had to get creative more than once. I'll never forget driving into the lumber yard in that car. The looks that we got from the guys in the yard, like what the hell do these two think they're doing? What could we possibly fit in a car so tiny? I'll tell you what we could fit. Exactly 14 2 by 8 by 8s with the trunk closed which was enough for two tables, and so that was enough for me. Once we started building hutches and servers, we started buying plywood, full 4x8 sheets. Initially, we'd make the plans beforehand and then have the guys at Lowe's cut it down for us so that we could fit it in the car and take it back to the shop. We only did this a time or two before we realized that their cuts were less than accurate, and we had a table saw, we might as well be using it. And so from that point on, anytime we needed plywood, we'd toss a moving blanket up on the top of the Nissan, stick our hands out the window and hold one side of it each, take our turns nice and slow, and that's how we would get our plywood back to the shop. It was miserable in the winter and almost impossible when it was raining, but we made it work. We didn't have direct access to outside from our shop. We were sort of an interior corner unit. We had a regular door and a bay door that opened up to a hallway, and the adjacent hallway led to the side door, which was our main access to outside. Having so much more to unload now every time we bought more materials or were stocking up on supplies, just kind of carrying whatever we could fit in our two hands down the hallway, around the corner, and into our unit was not the most efficient thing to do anymore. It makes me think of our neighbor at the warehouse, John. God, John was a really rough and gruff Staten Island guy who had been warehousing furniture, fine imported Italian furniture for 25 plus years. I remember when we first leased the studio, we were walking around with the property manager and she was telling us about the different tenants and she told us that this was basically John's warehouse and if we ever needed anything, he was the guy to go to. He was an intimidating guy. Uh, he was very loud. You could hear his voice from a mile away and he said what was on his mind. He didn't care if he hurt your feelings. He would never set out to do it intentionally, but he was just a little rough around the edges. God, not to mention, for the first however many months that we were at the studio, we thought his name was Joe. And so anytime we would see him, there would be times when we needed access to his bay door because it was a bit bigger than the side doors. And we would have to go into one of his units all the way into the back, into his office, and disturb him while he was in his office and, you know, knock on the door. And I'd say, Joe, uh, could you mind, would you mind moving your truck for me? And I was mortified to find out later on, like months down the road, he had never once said anything. He had never corrected us that his name was John. His name was John, and we'd been calling him Joe this entire time. But he ended up being a really great guy. He, as kind of a more established businessman, I guess someone who's been in the in the industry for a long time, um, he saw the amount of time and, and work that we put in. We'd be at the studio working at 5, 6, 7 a.m. from the night before when he was just coming in for works to, to start his day. 
And I think that coupled with like the quality of work that we were putting out really gained some respect on our part from him. And so feeling like someone like him could take us seriously was, was really nice. And something that he said to us once was, if you got wheels, use them. And as simple as that sounds, it totally stuck with us. And so that prompted yet another change. We added casters to our main work table, which not only made, uh, made it easier to move around the shop, but then it acted as a massive dolly. And so anytime we were loading things in or moving stuff out, we would load up the table and wheel it down the hallway. And it made things a lot more efficient. It was a big improvement for us. I think the thing maybe to take from all of this is that if you want something badly enough, you'll find a way to get it. We could have come up with a million different reasons why we shouldn't have started a business, why we couldn't do what we wanted to do. You know, we didn't have enough money, or we didn't have the right tools, or we didn't have a truck, or we didn't want to work in a place that didn't have AC. It's all bullshit. I will absolutely take the Nissan to the lumberyard. I don't care how ridiculous I look. I don't care what people think. I need to get wood, and this is my way of getting it. And if I have to wear two pairs of pants and a scarf so I don't freeze while I'm working in the wintertime, then I'll bundle up. It wasn't always pretty. It wasn't always fun or efficient. But we didn't want to make excuses. We wanted to make it work. So we did. We did.